Hello, I'm Christina from The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. And today I'm a little embarrassed to admit something. We are right now in my studio space. I am very lucky that I have an extra bedroom that I can use as a studio space. And usually what you see is behind me and it's all nice and organized. But what you can't see is the other side of the camera, but I'm gonna show it to you, so stay tuned. <laughs> sometimes life happens, doesn't it? And sometimes those projects that I'm always telling you guys we need to get finished, they just don't. They get piled up for whatever reason. It has been quite a whirlwind end of the year for me, and some things have just been kind of put aside. Now, in this teeny tiny room, is also a piece of exercise equipment and I was on it this morning and I got really irritated because as I was looking around my space, I kept seeing unfinished projects. So that was the inspiration for this video today. Today, I'm gonna see how many of the projects I can get done. It's kind of like my birthday present to myself. My birthday is coming up. And one of the things that stresses me out the most is stuff that's not done. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it. Does that happen to you? If so, comment down below. Let me know I'm not alone. Let's just get started and see how many projects I can get done. I also hope this will inspire you to get your space organized and get done too. So here's the fairly organized space. I'm set up for a live sale, so the items on the table are good, but let's kind of zoom out. <laughs> Over here, we have a table. Yeah, this table I did a while back, and uh, I have the legs, but I need to attach the legs. It's as simple as that. Some of the hardware I have, I wasn't sure if it fit, but I have the hardware. Also, behind the table is a bed which I need to pull out and see what I need to finish. This is my elliptical machine where I had the view of everything not done. Right in front of it, I have this piece. It only has one coat of wax. Looks like it definitely needs more. And totally excuse the mess, missing the hardware. We need to get that waxed again with another coat. A lot of the wax has soaked in. So that one needs to be done, waxed and hardware. I've also got this little kid high chair, adorable, but it needs to be glued because it's super wobbly. It's an easy fix. It just needs to be re-glued. Over here, this piece, which has a bunch of junk on it. <laughs> this piece, it's done, except do you see it's missing hardware. So the hardware's around here. We're probably gonna find it need to get the hardware on it and get pictures taken. We have random junk. There's some salvage down here. It's really cool. Do you see the two pieces of salvage that need to be reattached? Pieces of wood need to be put right there. Yep, got to do that. This is kind of becoming my catch-all. <laughs> I had been using this for my live sale, but now I just throw stuff on it. So I've got to sort through, but there's the hardware I need to finish. It's not even done painted yet. Yep, it just kind of got in progress. And let's turn around. You get to see all the nitty gritty of my space today. This is my staging wall. See that blue stencil piece? That needs to go to my booth. Uh, that's made with JRV stencils. And I was gonna put that in my booth to inspire people and show people what they could do with DIY paint and stencils. But it's not very inspiring in my workspace. Also that pelt board needs to go in my workspace for sale. It has a price tag. And I was working on a sample of what you could do with a pelt board. And this is the let it snow sign that I was working on. Um, do you see the pencil marks? Yeah, I just need to clear up the pencil marks and seal it and it'll be good to go. I might add a few more snowflakes. Um, I think it really, really needs it. So just a few more touches on that. I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I'm gonna get working. First thing I need to do is make some room to work.
Are you enjoying this video? If so, take a quick second, give it a like, and subscribe to my channel. Also, click the bell for notifications every time I upload a new video. It really helps me to continue to grow my channel to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create. This piece needs to be reclued, but the first thing you gotta do is get rid of the old glue, which can sometimes be tricky, because if you see, this slides out. <laughs> So remove the old glue, re-glue, and clamp. Since I was gluing, it was time to glue the salvage. It's always a good idea to batch your projects together. It saves you time. I'm using Type Bond 2 glue. If you want to order some for yourself, click on my Amazon storefront below. I started this piece on my show on the DIY Paint Facebook page, Piece by Piece with Christina, on Sundays at 9 a.m. Eastern. The problem with the show is a lot of times I don't get enough time to finish, and I always say, I will finish off camera. Sometimes I do, most of the time I do, and other times I don't. The hardware here was one of those cases. To finish this piece, I'm using DIY paint in Sandy Blonde. You can use DIY paint directly on hardware because it is clay based and has no VOCs and it pretty much sticks to any surface. I'm also speeding things along a little bit using a hairdryer because I'm trying to get all the projects done. The next step is to wet distress. And the way you do that is a wet rag. DIY paint is not going to set completely until it's sealed. It can be reactivated, which makes it awesome for blending. Also awesome when you have to leave your project, you can always come back to it, add a little water, blend, or in this case, wet distress. Do one more step after we do this. If you wet distress too much, you can just paint it, add a little bit more paint. Next step is to seal with wax. I'm using DIY paint white wax. All you do is rub it on with a cloth and buff it off. And what's really great about white wax is it's going to stay in the details. Usually for hardware, you only need one coat of wax. To purchase any of the products that I'm using here today, you can shop my online store at shoptheturnblag.com or if you're local to Lincoln Park, Michigan, you can shop my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall. This is the table that needs hardware. It was finished in DIY paint, sandy blonde, and coated with white wax. And it was a while ago, and I didn't get the hardware done. Just life happens, right? So usually I put the hardware in a Ziploc, but it's been getting out of control because I have a lot of projects that aren't finished. So this time I was smart, I hope. The hardware pieces, so the hardware I just painted, but the screws are what always get lost for me. I put them in the piece. I highly recommend if you're working on pieces, put the screws, even the Ziploc bag with all the stuff in the piece. So if life gets busy, you don't have to keep hunting all over the place for these. Up next is this little piece. Needs another coat of black wax from DIY Paint. I like when I paint a piece black to coat it with black wax. It makes the piece extra rich and just beautiful. I think it really makes a difference if you seal with black wax on a black piece. But two coats is what's needed for most pieces of furniture. If you see that streaky finish, that means you need more wax. I'm gonna apply this wax using my favorite wax brush, my JRV stencil brush. 
For more information on waxing and finishing pieces, check out the link to the video above. I let the wax set for a few hours. Normally I wait 24 hours before buffing my piece to really make it shine, but I'm in a rush. So the front drawers I'm gonna buff lightly, attach the hardware, and then tomorrow I will give it a final buffing. One of the projects not originally on my list was to clean up this floor, but when I cleared the space, I realized it really needed it. Now I paint with DIY paint, and so cleanup is really easy. I do not use a drop cloth when I paint, so I know with a mop bucket and water, even if the paint is days old, it will easily come off. So since the floor was viewable, I grabbed a bucket of water and cleaned off the paint. A clean floor was a nice little extra bonus in my finished projects day. Next project, and I think we're up to number six, was the Let It Snow sign. I needed to cover up the pencil marks. I thought they would erase, they didn't. So instead, I'm just painting them with DIY paint in the same color, Hey Sailor. Also adding a few more snowflakes to my Let It Snow sign. I'm going to be putting this in my booth when it is complete so I can show off what you can do with the boards of wood that I also sell in my booth. Because I was also saving time on my projects, I coated this with a spray clear coat, which I don't normally use, but it got the project completed a lot quicker. On to another project, and my kitty cat Sage was there helping me. Um, remember when I said this would be so simple? Over here, we have a table. Yeah, this table I did a while back. And uh, I have the legs, but I need to attach the legs. It's as simple as that. Famous last words. This table, we have three legs that are going on smoothly and the third is just not working. don't know if you can tell but the light is fading on day one and honestly it's amazing how much you can get done if it's all got to be done seriously the first hour and a half I already had a huge pile of what I had to do let's see what's left I took pictures of the small end tables Staged photos are so important. I use these on social media and to advertise my pieces at Plaza Antiques. That big table, that leg has a huge issue, so I still have to fix it. I didn't get to painting the bed at all. Car. People are coming home from work, so I've got to finish painting the bed. I've got to fix the table leg. Other than that, I had a very productive first day, and I'm pleased to say many of the things are going to go into my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall. Tomorrow I get the parts of the table and I finish painting the bed. I took all completed items to my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall and have listed them for sale. I've also shared them on social media and listed them online. The whole point of this video is to inspire you to finish your projects. I'm also going to give you a few tips to kind of help you get those projects done, things I've learned over the years that have helped me, so stay tuned for those at the end. I even finished a few more projects than I expected, like cleaning my floor in my studio space, which is really nice and makes me feel good. But there were things I could not accomplish. The bed is not done. And I did get two coats of paint put on it, but I still need to finish distressing it. I also will need to seal the bed and I still have to paint the side rails. So lots more to do with that. But there are still projects not done. And I wanna keep this real because this might happen to you too. 
that table is driving me crazy with the table legs. What has happened with the table legs is over time, where the bolt goes for the table leg to be secured, it has loosened. And so I have done multiple things, including going to the hardware and asking for help, going online, doing more research to find the best way to patch that area so it can have a secure hold and support the weight of a table. And I've gotten a lot of great ideas that haven't worked for me. I'm still looking for the perfect fit for the table. We thought we had it. I took it to the mall to set up the table and the legs were still not sturdy. And now I have two legs that have loosened the same way. I'm going to try wood glue and wood dowels to patch the holes and then re-drill. Fingers crossed. If you have a good suggestion, comment down below. I just like to salvage, repurpose, and create. I know I could put new legs on this table and there should always be a plan B. I know yesterday my plan B was have a big bonfire. Um, it's really important to give yourself some grace if you're working on these projects. Let's review my tips for finishing my projects. Number one, you need to find the time. We're busy, I know, but you need to just wake up one morning and find the time. The good news is when you start those projects, usually most of them get done a lot quicker than you expected. The bulk of my projects were done seriously in an hour and a half. I had to come back later and buff the furniture and reattach the hardware. But all those other projects you saw were done in an hour and a half and I had just let them sit for weeks. The next piece of advice is make sure you have space to work. You saw I cleaned out an area. Sure, I put everything in my hallway so that my workspace was clear, but make room so that you can get your projects done so you don't end up bumping into things or breaking things while you're working. The other is batch work. That means finding things that need similar work done and doing them all together. I glued everything together. Often, I will also sand a whole bunch of pieces at one time. That way, all the equipment is out it's real easy just to continue on to the next project and it gets things done a lot quicker. My other piece of advice is what I prefer. I always play motivational music of some sort, pump you up music while I'm working because that helps me get it done and get in the mindset. Another thing I do is I usually will reward myself in some way, like if I can get X, Y, and Z done, I can have a bubble bath that day or I can go thrifting or Find something fun you want to do at the end of the day if you can get all of these things completed. It doesn't have to cost you more money. The other thing that's really important is ask for help. Uh, with this table, there were some weird things I tried that didn't work. And so I was getting frustrated. I'm like, fine, I'm just not going to work on it. If you get to that point, it's important to ask for help. You can Google almost anything and figure out an answer. This table leg fix has been a little tricky because some of the things I found online have not worked. So I've asked people at the hardware and some have had really good ideas. I've asked friends, some have had good ideas and I'm still trying on this table leg. But if things don't work with your projects, and if you work on projects like I do, where you're taking pieces, you're really trying hard to save, those pieces are sometimes even more difficult to get fixed because sometimes they were curbside for a reason. You can try, but make sure to give yourself some grace. If the piece is not gonna work, maybe have a plan B. In this case, I have a wide variety of legs in my booth, table legs, at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall. I could put different legs on this table and that would solve my problem. So that's a possible plan B. I'm not sure the legs I have in stock are really the style, but I might, I just have to check that out. And I will of course need to paint them to match. Another option is I salvage stuff, so I could use parts and reuse them. But in this case, the tabletop is in such good condition, it's kind of heartbreaking for me to do that but have a plan B and also give yourself grace. <laughs> this table is just my current challenge and I always try to think like when I finish this or get it resolved, how I'm gonna feel and hopefully I will have even more self-confidence for completing it. So make sure if your projects aren't done, give yourself some grace, don't be too hard on yourself, but also find some time to complete as much as you can. <laughs>
Persistence paid off with this table. I know I had planned to just throw it in the burn pile many times, but I stuck to it and putting the dowels in with wood glue and then reinserting the hanger bolts worked and we have a secure table and it is now in place at my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall. So get out there, finish your projects, stick with it. Good luck with finishing all of those projects. Now get out there to salvage, repurpose, and create.